In today's episode, I'm going to share with you seven books that have really changed my life and have made me the woman that I am today. So if you're a woman watching this, you definitely want to stay tuned and see what these seven books are. Alexandra Villaruel Abrego, and I welcome you to another episode of Alexandra TV. Now, in today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you seven books that have marked my life, if I can say like that. Now, before we get started, of course, if you haven't downloaded your ABA Pyramid yet, what are you waiting for? The ABA Pyramid is a concept that we've developed here at AV Enterprises, and it's the nine levels of personal and professional development. What it does is that it allows you to see where you're at on your journey of growth and expansion. So if you want to see what this is all about, just go to the description below this video, click on the link, and you'll be able to download the poster for free. All right, now let's get into to today's subject now like i said what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be sharing with you seven books uh these seven books i read them when i was in my 20s and they have really shaped me into the woman that i am today literally i really believe they have so i'm going to be sharing them with you in order of which one i read first and so on all right so let's begin with the first one i think this one i read it probably when i was 22 years old if i'm not mistaken and it's one of the many books that I love from Marianne Williamson. Uh, I love, you know, A Return to Love. I love Illuminata. There's many books uh, from her that I love. She is an incredible woman. And this book, however, is one that is called A Woman's Worth. It's a very short read, as you can see, very easy read. And the way that I would describe this um, is really kind of like a, a poem for women for women empowerment it's not literally a poem right she's not writing poetry but the way as, as i remember you know it's been like almost 10 years that i read this book but when i remember this book and what i read and and how it, it helped me and, and shaped me really as i was you know a young woman it was like a poem to my womanhood and to my worth right this is why it's called a woman's worth so if you're a woman and you're struggling perhaps with your worth as a woman and where you stand in the world or you're starting your journey of growth this is really a book that you have to read of course like i said i recommend all of her other books but a woman's worth is i think that the first book you should read from her so number one recommendation the second book i recommend and this one is not only because most of the books that i'm going to share with you here are really spiritual right this one is more uh, for business uh, i'm sure you've heard about the book sun Tzu, right the the art of war but this one is sun Tzu for women. So this is the art of war for women winning in business. We live in a patriarchal society, right? We live in a man's world, as they say, and we are women here in, in, in the men's world. And I remember reading this book when I was around like 22, uh, because I was just starting in business, right? I was 22 years old. I was in a business that was dominated by men. And I wanted to know how to navigate through that, right? And how to be powerful through that and how to, you know, stand my ground and be respected as, as a young woman in this business. So I know that this book really helped me. And as it says here, you know, it's ancient strategies for today's workplace. Uh, so it's really recommended. I also recommend Sun Tzu, you know, the, the, the regular classic book. But this one, I think, is great for women. As you can see, there's like coffee all over it. I don't know what I did back in the day. I probably drop coffee on it or whatever but anyways recommend it. the next book i think this one i read it when i was like 23 years old it's called the way of the superior men by david data now this is very interesting because this book was written by a man and for men right so this is a book really for men the subtitle is a spiritual guide to mastering the challenges of women work and sexual desire and this is really for men to read. However, I read this book because I wanted to understand men better, right? So I remember reading this book and getting so many aha moments of like, huh, okay, this is why men do what they do. This is, you know, as you know, being a, a young woman, I grew up without a father, a father, I didn't have any brothers. So I wanted to really understand, you know, the mind of men and especially of the superior men. So this book is there to teach a man how to be superior. So I think if you're a woman and you read this, it also helps you see what kind of men you want, right? So it helps you understand the mind of men, but also, you know, have a certain standard for the type of men that you want to have in your life. So definitely a recommendation for, you know, women, but also for men, obviously. The next book is really one of my favorites. Uh, I love the title. It's very controversial because the title of this book is called Pussy. 
a reclamation. And this is from Regina Thomas Hogger. I hope I'm pronouncing it well. So this book, I read it when I was, I believe, 25 years old. And um, this is a book about the power of your body and especially the power that you have between your legs, ladies. So for a long time in this patriarchal society that we live in, we have been told that we should be ashamed of our body. So there's only like two archetypes of women, right? It's the prude, like the virgin or the prostitute. It's always either or. And we have never been taught as women to really accept our bodies and to see the magic and the power in our bodies, and especially this power that we hold between our legs, right? So this book is all about that. And I love this author who really goes on to explain how you can use what's between your leg to get what you want in life, to get what you want in business, to get what you want in relationships, to get what you want when it comes to money and everything. Tr truly, you have the magic potion between your legs, ladies. Read this book. The next book that I recommend, this one I read it when I was 23, 24 years old. And this was really the first book, the, 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 the book that introduced me to the world of you know, the divine feminine, to the world of the goddess, to the world of the, you know, not history, but her story. And this book is called The Chalice and the Blade. It was sent to me at the end of 2013 by my literary agent after we met. And he said, I want you to read this book. And this book is about the story of women. So, so the subtitle is our, our history, our future. It's by Rianne Aisler. I hope I'm pronouncing it well. Once again, this is a book that is based on a lot of real evidence so you know a lot of times when people talk about you know feminine energy and feminine power a lot of people think it's like woo, -woo you know here we go with the spiritual side of things but the reality is that if you really dig into these topics and you understand where this this you know concept of the goddess comes from where the concept of feminine power comes from there's actually real not only scientific but uh you know uh, in anthropology and archaeology there's real evidence and proof that there is a thing such as, let's say, the goddess or such as the feminine power, right? And the same way that there's, there's you know, a thing as fem masculine power, masculine energy. But anyways, this book, The Chalice and the Blade, and the reason why it's called The Chalice and the Blade is because the chalice, which we see in church, basically the metaphor for that is the, 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 the womb of the woman and the blade is the the part of the man right so this book goes to show that you know what they call the, the 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 holy grail you know the lost holy grail in reality is the lost feminine energy in the world so when people say you know the search for the holy grail and all of that in reality what it is 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 the search for that feminine power that men and women have lost throughout the years but anyways i i really recommend this book it was an eye opener for me it was the beginning of this beautiful journey that i started at 23 24 years old uh, about these topics that i think are so fascinating you're gonna see that the next books are really about that the next book is really one that i would put with the categories of books such as um a Course in Miracle. I've talked about it here on Alexandra TV a few times. Books like um, Think and Grow Rich. This book has revolutionized my life. After I read The Chalice and the Blade, I wanted to, I wanted more, right? I wanted to learn more about, about her story, right? Not his story, but her story. And that's when I stumbled upon this book, When God Was a Woman by Merlin Stone. This is, I remember reading the first pages of the book and I remember crying, like I was literally crying. I, I wanna like, let's say, let me read something to you. Okay, let me just read this part, okay, from Simone de Beauvoir. This is not the part where I was crying, but this is really, I think, powerful. So, let me read this. Men enjoys the great advantage of having a God endorse the, core, the code he writes. And since men exercises a sovereign authority over woman, it is especially fortunate that this authority has been vested in him by a supreme being. For the Jews, the Mohammedans, and Christians, among others, man is master by divine right. The fear of God will therefore repress any impulse towards revolt in the downrotten woman. So what this means is that if you grew up in a patriarchal religion, which all religions today are pretty much patriarchal, you have been told that God is a masculine entity. And therefore you as a woman, you are not godly, right? That you are not this supreme power. And if you dare 
to think otherwise or even to do maybe some research then all of a sudden you are a sinner and you are going to hell anyways but this book what it shows it it shows the evidence the real evidence and proof that has been discovered over the past hundred years that there was a time in history when God was a woman the same way today and for the past six thousand years we have believed in a masculine God there was a time where masculine God was not a concept and it was a goddess. And the reason for that is because before science existed, the concept of paternity did not exist. And therefore people believed that the woman was a supreme being because all of a sudden her belly would start growing. And then nine months later, there was a baby that would pop out and they were like, oh my God, she's the creator. So who was the creator back in the day? It was a goddess. So anyways, this shows all of the evidence, all of so the subtitle here is the landmark exploration of the ancient worship of the great goddess and the eventual suppression of woman rights. And the way that rights is written here is not rights such as our, you know, rights in life, but rights, rituals. Why were rituals suppressed? Why are people in religion so scared of rituals and things like that? It's because when you take away our rituals, you take away our rights. Anyways, it's a great read. As you can see, you know, I've, I've been through this book a few times. I love it highly recommended but only if you are ready if you're ready to expand your mind if you're ready to open your mind to new ideas and new concepts and not be afraid recommendation all right and now the last book and as you can see you know we're going from you know just regular great books to like more advanced very um almost esoteric books you know that a lot of people in the world would be kind of reluctant to reading but i think that as a woman if you want to be empowered if you want to understand where your power comes from you need to understand where you come from right and and what has happened why is it that in the past you know thousands of years women were not allowed to go to school to to, to vote you know to um to to work you know why why would that be and there was a time where we could you know and now that time we're going back to that but what happened what happened in there and i think to understand like i said how powerful you are as a woman you need to understand what happened to us you know the suppression of feminine power and feminine energy so anyways this last book that i'm going to share with you was very hard to choose because i've read a lot of books i would say in the past two three years i've been reading a lot of books about this about her should i say about mary magdalene so this is called the gospel of mary magdalene um if again this is all based on evidence this one was written by jean yves leloup um it's all you know all these books are not just some woo -woo things that people are just taking from anywhere this was was written after uh, in 1945 the nag hammadi uh scripts if i can say it like that were, were found right so this is really a recommendation it's the gospel of mary magdalene it's the same way that it was the gospel of paul the gospel of peter and all of that mary magdalene had a gospel as well and a lot of people you know i grew up in, in a catholic home believing that mary magdalene was a prostitute when in actuality it is not true uh, she was not a prostitute and now there is evidence and even the catholic church has said in in a written statement you know that it's not true that it didn't happen that she was not a prostitute right uh, and that was just kind of made up but anyways this um this is a very powerful book because you get to read her part of the story and what happened back in the day uh, when jesus you know was alive and after that with the resurrection and her teachings but there's many books about her about mary magdalene and about understanding because i think she was the first woman who um it was the beginning of the suppression of the feminine when uh you know the catholic church decided that they didn't want women to be in their story right in, in in the history of what had happened and the only two women that could be would be the the virgin or the prostitute that was all that there was right but that is not the truth that's not how it really went but anyways if you feel ready if you feel ready like i said to open your mind i highly recommend this book it is a great read all right so these are the seven books that i wanted to share with you you know before i film videos i like to do research to see what other videos people have done and i've seen a lot of videos about you know books that are recommended for women um great books great books you know about empowerment and about work and about money and about relationships and it's great but i think that beyond all of that in order to really uh change your life change yourself understand just the incredibly powerful being that you are you need to understand your history you need to understand where you come from you need to understand what has happened why 
were women seen as the, the 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 less than being you know why were men superior for such a long time what happened in history uh, in order to regain and reclaim really your power so i hope that you're gonna read these books let me know in the comment section if you like me maybe to do i don't know a video about you know when god was a woman or you know about mary magdalene or maybe if you want more book recommendations let me know in the comment section i would love to read from you if you like this video don't forget to like it don't forget to share it with all of your friends and of course to subscribe for new episodes almost every no every week should i say here on alexandra tv so that is it for today and i'll see you very very soon